new driving theory test practice. There are 28 alertness theory test questions. Topic 1, alertness study. Question 1 of 28. What should you do before making a U-turn? Mark 1 answer. A. Select a higher gear than normal. B. Check signs to see that U-turns are permitted. C. Give an arm signal as well as using your indicators. D. Look over your shoulder for a final check. The correct answer is B. Look over your shoulder for a final check. Explanation. If you have to make a U-turn, slow down and ensure that the road is clear in both directions. Make sure that the road is wide enough for you to carry out the maneuver safely. Question 2 of 28. What should you do as you approach this bridge? Mark 1 answer. A. Keep to 30 miles per hour. B. Slow down. C. Move to the right. D. Change gear. The correct answer is B. Slow down explanation. You should slow down and be cautious. The bridge is narrow and there may not be enough room for you to pass an oncoming vehicle at this point. Also, there's no footpath, so be aware of pedestrians in the road. Question 3 of 28. In which of these situations should you avoid overtaking? Mark 1 answer. A. On a 30 mile per hour road. B. In a one way street. C. Approaching a dip in the road. D. Just after a bend. The correct answer is. C. Approaching a dip in the road explanation. As you begin to think about overtaking, ask yourself whether it's really necessary. If you can't see well ahead, stay back and wait for a safer place to pull out. Question 4 of 28. What does this road marking mean? Mark 1 answer. A. It's safe to overtake. B. Traffic should use the hard shoulder. C. The road bends to the left. D. Overtaking traffic should move back to the left. The correct answer is. B. Overtaking traffic should move back to the left. Explanation. In this picture. The road marking shows that overtaking drivers or riders need to return to the left before they reach the hatch markings ahead. The hatch markings are designed to separate opposing streams of traffic. For example, approaching some junctions or dual carriageways. Question 5 of 28. Your mobile phone rings while you're traveling. What should you do? Mark 1 answer. A. Pull up at the nearest curb. B. Ignore it. C. Stop immediately. D. Answer it immediately. The correct answer is. D. Ignore it. Explanation. It's illegal to use a handheld mobile or similar device when driving or riding. Except in a genuine emergency. The safest option is to switch off your mobile phone before you set off and use a message service. If you've forgotten to switch your phone off and it rings. You should ignore it. When you've stopped in a safe place, you can see who called and return the call if necessary. Question 6 of 28. Why are these yellow lines painted across the road? Mark 1 answer. A. To help you keep the correct separation distance. B. To make you aware of your speed. C. To tell you the distance to the roundabout. D. To help you choose the correct lane. The correct answer is B. To make you aware of your speed. Explanation. These lines are often found on the approach to a roundabout or a dangerous junction. They give you extra warning to adjust your speed. Look well ahead and do this in good time. Question 7 of 28. What should you do when you're approaching traffic lights that have been on green for some time? Mark 1 answer. A. Be ready to stop. B. Brake hard. C. Maintain your speed. D. Accelerate hard. The correct answer is. A. Be ready to stop. Explanation. The longer traffic lights have been on green, the sooner they'll change. Allow for this as you approach traffic lights that you know have been on green for a while. They're likely to change soon, so you should be prepared to stop. Question 8 of 28. Which of the following should you do before stopping? 
Mark one answer. A. Use the mirrors. B. Flash the headlights. C. Select a higher gear. D. Sound the horn. The correct answer is A. Use the mirrors. Explanation. Before pulling up, check the mirrors to see what is happening behind you. Also assess what's ahead and make sure you give the correct signal if it will help other road users. Question 9 of 28. You're following a large vehicle. Why should you stay a safe distance behind it? Mark 1 answer. A. You'll be able to corner more quickly. B. You'll allow the driver to see you in their mirrors. C. You'll keep out of the wind better. D. You'll help the large vehicle to stop more easily. The correct answer is B. You'll allow the driver to see you in their mirrors. Question 10 of 28. When you see a hazard ahead, you should use the mirrors. Why is this? Mark 1 answer. A. To check what's happening on the road ahead. B. Because you'll need to brake sharply to a stop. C. Because you'll need to accelerate out of danger. D. To assess how your actions will affect following traffic. The correct answer is. D. To assess how your actions will affect following traffic. Explanation. You should be constantly scanning the road for clues about what's going to happen next. Check your mirrors regularly, particularly as soon as you spot a hazard. What's happening behind may affect your response to hazards ahead. Question 11 of 28. You're waiting to turn right at the end of a road. Your view is obstructed by parked vehicles. What should you do? Mark 1 answer. A. Move quickly to where you can see so you only block traffic from one direction. B. Turn your vehicle around immediately and find another junction to use. C. Stop and then move forward slowly and carefully for a clear view. D. Wait for a pedestrian to let you know when it's safe for you to emerge. The correct answer is C. Stop and then move forward slowly and carefully for a clear view. Explanation. At junctions, your view is often restricted by buildings, trees or parked cars. You need to be able to see in order to judge a safe gap. Edge forward slowly and keep looking all the time. Don't cause other road users to change speed or direction as you emerge. Question 12 of 28. What may happen if you hang objects from your interior mirror? Mark 1 answer. A. Your radio reception might be affected. B. Your sun visor might get tangled. C. Your windscreen would mist up. D. Your view could be obstructed. The correct answer is. B. Your view could be obstructed. Explanation. Ensure that you can see clearly through the windscreen of your vehicle. Stickers or hanging objects could obstruct your view or draw your attention away from the road. Question 13 of 28. You're on a long motorway journey. What should you do if you start to feel sleepy? Mark 1 answer. A stop on the hard shoulder for a rest. B. Leave the motorway and stop in a safe place. C. Play some loud music. D. Drive faster to complete your journey sooner. The correct answer is, B. Leave the motorway and stop in a safe place. Explanation. If you feel sleepy, you should leave the motorway at a service area or at the next exit and stop in a safe place to rest. A supply of fresh air can help to keep you alert before you reach the exit. But it isn't a substitute for stopping and resting. Question 14 of 28. Why should you switch your lights on when it first starts to get dark? Mark 1 answer. A. To make your dials easier to see. B. So that you blend in with other drivers. C. So others can see you more easily. D. Because the street lights are lit. The correct answer is. C. So others can see you more easily. Explanation. Your headlights and tail lights help others on the road to see you. It may be necessary to turn on your lights during the day if visibility is reduced, for example, due to heavy rain. 
In these conditions, the light might fade before the street lights the time to switch on. Do you seem to be safe? Question 15 of 28. What's most likely to distract you while you're driving? Mark one answer. A. Checking the mirrors. B. Using a mobile phone. C. Using the demisters. D. Using the windscreen wipers. The correct answer is B. Using the demisters. It's easy to be distracted. Planning your journey before you set off is important. A few sensible precautions are to tune your radio to stations in your area of travel. Take planned breaks and plan your route. Except for emergencies, it's illegal to use a handheld mobile phone while driving. Even using a hands-free kit can severely distract your attention. Question 16 of 28. When may you use a handheld mobile phone in your car? Mark one answer. A. When receiving a call. B. When suitably parked. C. When driving an automatic vehicle. D. When driving at less than 30 miles per hour. The correct answer is B. When suitably parked. Explanation. It's illegal to use a handheld mobile phone while driving, except in a genuine emergency. Even using a hands-free kit can distract your attention. Park in a safe and convenient place before receiving or making a call or using text messaging. Then you will also be free to take notes or refer to papers. Question 17 of 28. You're driving on a wet road. You have to stop your vehicle in an emergency. What should you do? Mark one answer. A. Keep both hands on the steering wheel. B. Give an arm signal. C. Apply the handbrake and footbrake together. D. Select reverse gear. The correct answer is A. Keep both hands on the steering wheel. Explanation. As you drive, look well ahead and all around so that you're ready for any hazards that might develop. If you have to stop in an emergency, react as soon as you can while keeping control of the vehicle. Keep both hands on the steering wheel so you can control the vehicle's direction of travel. Question 18 of 28. What should you do when moving off from behind a parked car? Mark one answer. A. Use the exterior mirrors only. B. Check both interior and exterior mirrors. C. Look around after moving off. D. Give a signal after moving off. The correct answer is. B. Check both interior and exterior mirrors. Explanation. Before moving off, you should use both the interior and exterior mirrors to check that the road is clear. Look around to check the blind spots and, if necessary, give a signal to warn other road users of your intentions. Question 19 of 28. You're traveling along this narrow country road. How should you pass the cyclist? Mark one answer. A. Chain down one gear before you pass. B. Sound your horn as you pass. C. Leave them plenty of room as you pass. D. Keep close to them as you pass. The correct answer is. C. Leave them plenty of room as you pass. Explanation. Allow the cyclist plenty of room in case they wobble or swerve around a pothole or raise drain. Look well ahead before you start to overtake, because you'll need to use all of the road. Look for entrances to fields where tractors or other farm machinery could be waiting to pull out. Question 20 of 28. Your vehicle is fitted with a handheld telephone. What should you do to use the phone? Mark one answer. A. Find a safe place to stop. B. Steer the vehicle with one hand. C. Reduce your speed. D. Be particularly careful at junctions. The correct answer is A. Find a safe place to stop. Explanation. Never attempt to use a handheld phone while you're driving, except in a genuine emergency. It's illegal and will take your attention away from driving, putting you at greater risk of causing a collision. Question 21 of 28. You lose your way on a busy road. What's the best action to take? Mark one answer. A. Stop at traffic lights and ask pedestrians. B. 
Check a map and keep going with the traffic flow. D. Shout to other drivers to ask them the way. D. Turn into a side road. Stop and check a map. The correct answer is D. Turn into a side road. Stop and check a map. Explanation. It's easy to lose your way in an unfamiliar area. If you need to check a map or ask for directions, first find a safe place to stop. Question 22 of 28. When do windscreen pillars cause a serious obstruction to your view? Mark one answer. A. When you're driving on a motorway. B. When you're driving on a dual carriageway. C. When you're approaching a one-way street. D. When you're approaching bends and junctions. The correct answer is. D. When you're approaching bends and junctions. Explanation. Windscreen pillars can obstruct your view, particularly at bends and junctions. Look out for other road users, especially cyclists, motorcyclists and pedestrians, as they can easily be hidden by this obstruction. Question 23 of 28. You can't see clearly behind when reversing. What should you do? Mark one answer. A. Ask someone to guide you. B. Open the window to look behind. C. Look in the near side mirror. D. Open the door to look behind. The correct answer is A. Ask someone to guide you. Explanation. If you want to turn your car around, try to find a place where you have good all-round vision. If this isn't possible, and you're unable to see clearly, then get someone to guide you. Question 24 of 28. What does the term blind spot mean for a driver? Mark one answer. A. An area covered by your left hand mirror. B. An area covered by your right hand mirror. C. An area not covered by your headlights. D. An area not covered by your mirrors. The correct answer is. D. An area not covered by your mirrors. Explanation. Modern vehicles provide the driver with well-positioned mirrors, which are essential to safe driving. However, they can't see every angle of the scene behind and to the sides of the vehicle. This is why it's essential that, when necessary, you look around to check those areas not visible in your mirrors. Question 25 of 28. What's likely to happen if you use a hands-free phone while you're driving? Mark one answer. A. It will divert your attention. B. It will improve your safety. C. It will increase your concentration. D. It will reduce your view. The correct answer is. A. It will divert your attention. Explanation. Talking to someone while you're driving can distract you and, unlike someone in the car with you, the person on the other end of a mobile phone is unable to see the traffic situations you're dealing with. They won't stop speaking to you even if you're approaching a hazardous situation. You need to concentrate on your driving all of the time, but especially so when dealing with a hazard. Question 26 of 28. You're turning right onto a dual carriageway. What should you do before emerging? Mark one answer. A. Check that the central reservation is wide enough for your vehicle. B. Make sure that you leave enough room for a vehicle behind. C. Position your vehicle well to the left of the side road. D. Stop, apply the handbrake and then select a low gear. The correct answer is. A. Check that the central reservation is wide enough for your vehicle. Explanation. Before emerging right onto a dual carriageway, make sure that the central reservation is deep enough to protect your vehicle. If it isn't, you should treat the dual carriageway as one road and check that it's clear in both directions before pulling out. Neglecting to do this could place parts or all of your vehicle in the path of approaching traffic and cause a collision. Question 27 of 28. You're waiting to emerge from a junction. The windscreen pillar is restricting your view. What should you be particularly aware of? Mark one answer. A. Buses. B. Coaches. C. Lorries. D. Motorcyclists. The correct answer is. B. Motorcyclists. 
Explanation. Windscreen pillars can completely block your view of pedestrians, motorcyclists and cyclists. You should make a particular effort to look for these road users. Don't just rely on a quick glance. Question 28 of 28. How should you use a satellite navigation system so that it doesn't distract you when you're driving? Mark 1 answer. A. Choose a voice that you find calming. B. Only set the destination when you're lost. C. Stop in a safe place before programming the system. D. Turn it off while driving in built-up areas. The correct answer is. C. Stop in a safe place before programming the system. Explanation. Vehicle navigation systems can be useful when driving on unfamiliar routes. However, they can also distract you and cause you to lose control if you look at or adjust them while driving. Pull up in a convenient and safe place before adjusting them.